upload it later. <laughs> okay, so let us begin. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah, let me mute my computer. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> okay, welcome everyone to today's session, sharing about Atomy Probiotics. Yay! So today I'm going to share briefly about uh, just probiotics, not only about Atomy, and I hope today's session will be informative and helpful for you. So um, I guess many of you know about what is probiotics already, but to just generally go through first, probiotics are live microorganisms that benefit our health. So there are a lot of germs inside our intestines, but there are germs that is helpful for us. And there are germs that is harm harmful for us. So the ratio of these germs inside our intestines is very important because if the ratio is broken and imbalanced, then it can affect your immune system and it can affect your bowel movement and your health in general. So usually the ratio we say is good to be eight to two, good germs, which is probiotics, to be eight and those that are not to be two. So this is when you are born, you already have this good ratio, but as we age, we tend to sleep light, we eat bad food, we don't exercise, so this kind of bad habits, daily habits accumulate and end up to having the bad ratio and having all this um, unhealthy <laughs> body like ratio of probiotics inside. So that is why the doctors recommend in taking probiotics. And not only that, actually, before going on to the second part about what is the standards for choosing good uh, probiotics, I also mention a little bit more about how, why we should take probiotics, because probiotics can actually directly influence our health, especially like immune system. You might have like recalled maybe your sponsors when uh, you met her, she recommend, oh, if you have a skin trouble, then maybe take in atomy hemoim and probiotics. And you're like, why should I take in probiotics when I have skin troubles? Or you might have heard your sponsor tell you that if you have immune problems and take probiotics. Why is this? It's because um, your immune system can be divided into different functions. And uh, also when you look at our T cells, it also divides into three different parts. And one part of T cells, if your T cells, T1, T2, and T3, the ratio is Okay, there is a mosquito uh, is balanced imbalanced which is which means it's broken then your immune system is imbalanced and this can lead, lead to asthma and this also holds true for pregnant women so that is why i strongly recommend actually pregnant ladies to intake probiotics because if you want to prevent your baby from having asthma the skin troubles overreactive uh, immune system leading to screen, skin troubles that you cannot fix like later in the future and always having this issue, then you should take in probiotics. Researchers have shown that intaking probiotics can actually lead to cutting the percentage, per percentage into half of your baby having these skin troubles later in the future after birth if you take in probiotics when you're pregnant, which is a significant number a number that matters. And also when you're giving birth, if you give a natural birth, your baby will be more likely to have lesser of the skin troubles or immune system problems. But if you have some troubles, say, say, say for example, your baby is actually like, your the baby's have supposed to be downwards, but if it's the opposite way around, you cannot give natural birth, you need to open up, right? So when you do a surgery and take the baby out, the baby more likely to have this asthma or immune problems. So if uh, to prevent this kind of cases for your baby to become more healthy and immune system to be more stronger, pregnant ladies have to intake probiotics like 
it's a strong recommendation. <laughs> So not only pregnant ladies, but many people who want to improve their immune system or their uh, in intestine problems, such as you're having like diarrhea, you're not like, you're having digestion problems, then it's good to take probiotics to balance out that um, germs inside your intestines. So one of the there are a lot of centers that you can choose probiotics from but there is like if you if you want to know about all then it's gonna give you a headache so i just selected a couple of standards that is most important i would say out of all the standards one of the most important is this one that's why i put it as number one number one is where are the probiotics manufactured like where is it from that is one of the most important standards probiotics doesn't mean it is good because it has a lot of numbers inside. It depends on what kind of germ that has went inside the product. Say, for example, even though it is same lactobacillus germ probiotics that have went inside your product, depending on what kind of lactobacillus germ that what kind of company produced, the function can be so different. That is why if you're a doctor, you probably look into when you're researching about what kind of probiotics that you're gonna choose from, they check out these kind of companies. So um, these are some of the famous uh, companies uh, for producing probiotics. And why we look at what company it is from is because these kind of companies usually have their own technology for protecting their germs, probiotics from outer harmful environment, such as like anti-acidity uh, kind of thing. So protection against acid and protection against um, uh, well, yeah, digestive, um, uh, well, yeah, I forgot the word. Uh, what's that in English? Uh, the, the kind of, what is, Enzyme, uh, enzymes, <laughs> um, protection against all these enzymes to prevent the digestion, and also for like temperature, like to protect against high temperature or low temperature, so that it will survive. The, the probiotics will survive until the end. So they also use probiotics that is evidence based, which means a lot of research based, not like just random probiotics that the company just made up. So this is some of the famous companies. Uh, Danisco is from, uh, they are actually famous for FloraFit or How Are You Probiotics. That is like very Konglish. And Christian Hansen company is from Denmark and it's a 140 year old company, very famous among probiotics field and very famous for LGG, BB12 and, and LA5. So these kind of companies usually have their named probiotics, like these kind of probiotics that has so many researches backing up and also human experiments backing up for the effect and the function of that specific probiotics. So um, Provi also famous from Sweden and Rosel uh, is also from Canada and famous 100 year, year old and has is a multinational company famous for its protective technology for the probiotics against heat against acidity against enzymes very famous for this its capsulation technology and this is so and then there is uh, UAS Labs this company also 40 years old history and famous for uh, it's probiotics that has researches on. I didn't put the logo here yet, so okay, pass. And atomic probiotics. So this is what we call strains in Korea, but in English, I think it's gonna be quite different. So you you need to filter this. In English, I found that these different kind of just different kind of probiotics. They just call it strains. So. Uh, Bifidobacterium brave, this is a strain, and Lactobacillus 
Kase, this is also a strain. But in Korea, when we say it, a strain is something like DDS-1. So specific probiotics that even has a name to it. So this is about number one standard. If you're looking into buy, uh, buying a probiotics and you don't know a lot, then you look at the ingredient lineup and you try to check for this strain, which means a very specific name for that probiotics. And once you find that name inside your probiotics, you find, oh, they have used, the company have used a kind of like a good probiotics. But of course, this is not a definite standard because some companies just name their, pro their probiotics, even though it is not so significant. So you cannot trust this naming probiotics all the time. But generally, if that probiotics is from these companies that I have just mentioned, like Rose or Probi, then you can trust. So actually, best is to check what is the origin of that probiotics. Where is the company coming from? Is, is it from a company that you can really trust, the manufacturing company? So, so uh, that's the number one standard and most important because even if, I repeat one more time, even if it is the same lactobacillus uh, cassai as it is written here, from a same company, or a different company, the effect can be totally different, even though it has the same amount of germs inside. So you need to check that part out. That is why when you check out Adami's uh, website and look, check out the products detail, it has like DDS, a lot of explanations about our DDS probiotics inside because that is our signature probiotics inside our product. So what is the strains inside our original product? We actually have three. So uh, one is DDS-1 from UAS Labs and two is from uh, Rosel. So as you can see why I cannot say uh, naming is not always not so significant is because UAS Labs have named their product, but Losa didn't name their probiotics. So it's just random probiotic name, just normal one. But then it is patented and a very special probiotics. This is the capsulated probiotics that, of course, the effect will be so different from a normal uh, bifidobacterium uh, lungum that you will find from other probiotic product. So we have three detailed, like special signature probiotics inside from Loser and UAS Labs. And our new product from the United States, they have 12 strains inside and also similar uh, strain names from the companies. Same actually from UAS Labs, DBS, you can check out here. And also as one more additional here, here is how you can check lactobacillus here, dot, 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 GG. This is also named uh, probiotics. So you can check that one out as well. And second standard is, this one also kind of difficult to explain, but let me try to keep it simple. So we call it in Korean, tweet gyunsu, bojang gyunsu. So this is in Korean law, so it is different. But in United States, as far as I know, it is not regulated by law. And in other countries also, not so you know, regulated. So this is a difference, so note that. So this is called CFU. And what you, knew, what you knew, do you need to check is how, not how much went in, but how much survives at the end. So CFU is a uh, abbreviation for colony forming unity. And it is a unit used in microbiology to estimate the number of viable bacteria or fungal cells in a sample. Just simply put how much, how many probiotics is alive <laughs> at the moment that you check uh, the probiotics in the packet. So uh, this one, actually, you can just think, oh, then we just check for the CFU at the outer box of the, you know, your product, and you will be able to find out whether how many probiotics is inside the product or not. That is the, actually the trick here. 
the marketing of the probiotics companies because what is written outside of the books do not actually mean it is the exact amount of the probiotics that will be surviving until the end of the deadline of your product expiration date. But in Korea, it is regulated by law by the Korean government, by KFDA. You need to check here, not any other side of the box, because if you're written at the front of the box, hey, I have a hundred billion probiotics I put inside here, and you just write down a hundred billion probiotics I have put inside. That is legal. But then the CFU, they write here on the back of the box where it is written in Korean, Yongyang Kin and Jungbo, that is nutrition and function information. They cannot put a hundred billion, they have to put like 1 billion or 3 billion, which is the amount of probiotics that survives until the expiration date. <laughs> so you cannot trust all this probiotics company saying, wow, I put how much, how much, how much. <laughs> so isn't it shocking? This is all about marketing. So I hope the other probiotic companies are not offended by what I say, <laughs> but this is the fact. So I, tr I didn't try to like put what company did it, but I just screenshot specific how they did it. <laughs> so this you can check in the PPT slide here. They wrote it here. They put 33 billion probiotics inside their product. Hmm, dang, that's a lot. <laughs> but then once you actually check out the details on the side, I put the chart there together, you can check out. It is 10 times 8 billion. Uh, 10 times 8 is how much? That is actually 1 billion. So it's like 33 times different. So you cannot trust what is on the other side of the boxes or even the postings that they, the, part, the companies make on product detail on the website, but you need to actually check here. Only this is the area that the law can enforce the companies to abide the rules whatever product that is manufactured in Korea. <laughs> this is the legal standard. When it's expired, they check the CFU, which is how many probiotics is alive at the moment when the, the, the product is expired. And they have to write that number down here. So what is written on the outer other boxes and what is written down here will be totally different for some products. You need to check that one out. So that's why I say Tweet Gunsu is the amount of probiotics that the company put inside and what survives until the end guaranteed probiotics number. We call it in Korean, Po Jang Gyunsu. That is the number written down here is different. And for Korean products, this is holding true. For the other country products, it's different. What's the standard that they are using? We do not know. Mm, so that is that is a question mark. So this is some of the example. What is written outside of the box is not the CFU, the guaranteed CFU, I mean. Uh, here, they also written down here, if you check out the red underline here has uh, 2.5 billion uh, probiotics, uh, no, 25 billion probiotics per gram. And then people will say, wow, so much have went in. But they did not put, what is that gram standard for? So, because, and this is very easy to fall, in, fall into like this trap because here on the upper part, they say two gram per one packet. So it's very easy for the consumer to misunderstand that also this lactobacillus 
one gram has 25 billion and then this packet has two grams so wow so much probiotics have went inside that is a no because this kind of standard they put inside there it's per gram for raw material not the probiotic standard that is inside the packet dude so it's totally different so you actually can never figure out how much probiotics for that lactobacillus that they have put inside their label. Mm. So this is all, all about marketing. And then also this example, you can check out. They written down here, also same issue. They wrote, wrote down here, wow, 450 billion per gram. And you're like, dang, that's a lot. I should buy this one. And this is not even the probiotics that they have put inside or guarantee when expired. This is just raw material standard per gram. How much they have put in, they didn't put it over there, but in the nutrition and function list up, which is regulated by the law, they have written the correct information, which is 10 billion CFU. Oh, so now you know it's not 450 billion, but it's 10 billion. So you need to check that this part out always for all the products. This one, same thing. Um, and then this one, you check out the percentage, the, the one that I underline in green, uh, green on the line there. 1.43%, uh, 1.34%, 1.2%, 0 0.14%. All this percentage also you cannot trust because is it the percentage depending on the, the probiotics that you have put inside when you are making the product or is it percentage based on guaranteed probiotics? You do not know. And they will never say because this is top security information because once this one opens to the public we can also make the same probiotic product so no company will ever open up this exact ratio of the probiotics that they have put inside the product because that is the secret for making this product mm. so you cannot calculate how much uh probiotics how many probiotics have went inside for specific like that probiotics among you know, how many CFUs you cannot calculate actually. And you also need to check how many packets will you be taking in a day when you're calculating your CFU because you look at A product and B product for standard. This is all Korean products. Uh, a product, you're taking two packets a day and the guaranteed CFU, you can check out it's 2 billion per day, meaning one packet, they have 1 billion CFU. B product is one capsule a day and guaranteed 10 billion probiotics per day, which means one capsule is 10 billion. So you need to, when you're calculating the CFUs per one intake, this is also the math that you need to do as well. And then in Korea, it is regulated by law. Even if you have more than 10 billion CFU, you cannot put it here on the nutrition box. You cannot label here because KFDA states that if, even if you are intaking more than 10 billion probiotics per one day, it do not make significant difference whether it is 10 billion, 100 billion, 4,000 billion, it is the same. So from 100 million to 10 billion, that is the range of the probiotics, the number of probiotics that KFDA acknowledge as effective and functional. So uh, having more than 10 billion cannot be you know, extra except only one product in Korea because this product named Dimoshine have gotten an independent <laughs> functional um, patent for being functional for having 450 billion probiotics for that specific probiotics for digestive function. So on that, uh, unless you got the independent acknowledged patent for 
for your probiotics, like Hemoin also is an independent acknowledged product, right? So you, any other probiotics product is the same. It applies same actually to other probiotic product around the world. If your probiotics number goes beyond 10 billion, it's actually not that significant difference. So when you're choosing your product, you don't need to choose like a product that is way over in numbers and super expensive if it is somewhere around like 1 billion to around 10 billion in between there it is functional and if you want to make sure that it is being effective like within that range you try to be more choosing the product that is economical for you and check out the other functions also okay and yeah, this is what I mentioned. Korea is regulated by the government and KFDA, but uh, the other countries, they do not regulate. And then what about the CFUs that is written on the other products that I am intaking right now in my own country? It do have CFE written here. It is actually researched and listed by the company, not by the law. So when we check your product from your country, bring it into Korea and we check, um, many times it is different. So this is one of the controversial issues that's going around in Korea when Koreans are buying from America or Australia, from other countries. And, you know, bringing the product and intaking and testing it again within Korean, in within Korea, uh, sometimes the probiotic number is exceeding the CFUs that they have written down, which is really good because the, it means that the CFU that they have written down on their outer boxing is guaranteed CFU, meaning CFU based on expire date. But sometimes it is like not even half of what they have written down on their outer boxing. Boxing. So I wouldn't say which brand, <laughs> but like, yeah, there are certain brands also. Um, and that's why these have gone viral uh, this couple of years in Korea. And many Koreans have started using Korean brands, be, uh, not the foreign brands because of these differences in CFUs. And this is not that the other products from other countries is no good. It is it is because of many reasons. One could be because of delivery, um, because coming from maybe from America, coming to Korea, the delivery, like the container is hot, so they can die off also. And it could be also depending on the company, they might write down their CFU as not uh, the guaranteed CFU, but as CFU that they have put in, that they can make a big difference. And also can also depend on how they test their CFU because uh, per company and per government, may, uh, the way that they check could be different. Um, and because this is microorganisms, the packet, like you insert the germs and then drop it and they manifest it, they uh, culture it and they check the CFU. But even the slightest of drop can make the numbers very different, billions different. So this could be a reason also. So it's not that the other company product is bad, but what I wanted to emphasize here was that uh, why I like to trust more of the Korean probiotics brands is because the CFUs written, we can guarantee that this is expire date CFU, meaning it also already take into account all the heat, all the dying off, all the humidity, all the acidity, and all the external environment harmful factors that can kill all the probiotics through many experiments, and then average how many survive that CFU. So this is the minimum, you know, after all the heat and all this, at least we can guarantee that adding probiotics can guarantee 3 billion will be surviving after one year after the expire date. Meaning when you're taking after you purchase it right away, it is way over that because we put more than 3 billion. <laughs> so, but then when we are buying from the other countries, we cannot guarantee that. 
how much am I intaking when they say it's 30 billion um, CFU? I don't know. <laughs> so this is the things that you can check as well. And then our new product from America is 10 billion CFU guaranteed. And our original Atomic Probiotics is 3 billion CFU guaranteed. So that's the difference. And that is how you check your CFUs, uh, number of probiotics in your product, not depending on the outer boxing. This is a question that a lot of consumers ask me, but I nailed it just now. <laughs> okay. And then number three uh, is about the ratio. This is one of the most important factors when we need to check when you're buying probiotics product, but not that easy because the ratio is important in the fact that when, once you walk into a forest and the forest has many, many, many different types of trees, but it do not like come together, it's not a good forest, right? Uh, but then when you walk into a forest and it has like, wow, well, real tree forest, it's like very good because the trees come together, then it's a good forest. Same thing for probiotics product. It The probiotics are some probiotics are competitive with each other, so they fight. And if one kind of probiotics is strong and growing very fast in number, the other probiotics cannot survive. So this is there are these specific relationships in probiotics. So you need to choose good ratio and the kind of probiotics well. And but. This is something that the companies don't really open up because this is their business secret. Lah. <laughs> so this is important, but this is something that even the doctors is not easy to figure out because even if we email these companies, they will not teach you. <laughs> so then how? That's why this comes back to number one in choosing the company that you can trust. Um, not just a random company that you see online and say, wow, that's a, a lot of CFU and it's super cheap and you just buy it. No, that's a bad choice for you. Huh? So don't just buy a random product that is, well, expensive, so it must be good. It has high CFU or like it's high CFU and it's cheap. But you have to look at the manufacturing company and the kind of probiotics that's went inside and then the CFU because we cannot check number three properly. What kind of company you need to trust? So this is the three standard that is most important in choosing probiotics. And what else is good to know? Yay! Is good to remember that probiotics is freeze-dried mummy. So basically, probiotics, as at, in the beginning of my sharing, I mentioned that it is alive microorganisms. And you imagine these microorganisms that's alive, you need to package it and make it survive one year, two years, three years. So you imagine how can they survive that long period of time when imagine the environment inside the packet or even some probiotics is not in a packet or powder form, it's a tablet. So, how? They are freezing it and drying it. So they are just making a mummy. <laughs> Same thing with making a mummy. So you inside, imagine inside the pyramid, inside this specific environment where it is very dry and a good environment for the mummy to be preserved, then the mummy is a mummy. But then you imagine you take out this mummy and put it into a very humid and hot environment. And what will the mummy become? It will decay. Same thing with probiotics. It is good to... Um, so it is good to always keep it in the fridge, meaning dry and low temperature place. When you receive Adam probiotics, it's delivered... Um, uh, in room temperature, meaning it's just like, it's not delivered in the ice box yet, yeah? but it just, it's just delivered like a normal product. Yes, but it do not mean that probiotics are not dying off. 
this is the truth. So good, what is good to know about these probiotics is that even though these probiotics are just delivered to you in room temperature, always the best is not to keep a stock of these probiotics, but to order straight from the website and put it in the fridge and take it. That will make your CFU, guaranteed CFU survive much more than just 30 billion because Guaranteed after one year until expire is 30 billion, but we put 200. So if we put 200 and more is surviving, we're taking 100, then 30, uh, I mean, like 20 billion, not 3 billion. So confusing from Korean number to <laughs> American number. So from 20 billion to 3 billion, if you're taking 10 instead of 3, it is way better, right? So keep it in a fridge, fridge and then take it always and especially during summertime and you're living in a hot country please be aware of this factor and try not to keep a lot of stock for the probiotics but buy it and consume it right away so this is one of the reasons why prebiotics is important factor in choosing your probiotics as well prebiotics is pre means before right so food to feed the friendly bacteria so like this when you're buying probiotics it's good to check the sub ingredients whether the probiotics has food to survive for example like it's the probiotics is frozen and dried, but when the temperature becomes hot, they wake up. Hey, I'm alive now. And then it's inside a packet or in a tablet, and it do not have any food to eat from. Then what will you do? It's a harsh environment, no food. What happens? They die. <laughs> but at least if they have prebiotics, they will survive a little bit longer. So Prebiotics is important also when you're buying your probiotics. And our um, old probiotics and the new probiotics both have good prebiotics inside. So that's a fact you can check as well. And another um, news that went viral in Korea last year, end of last year, was actually this. There was this news announcement that came out that some probiotics is toxic and can cause harm for human health. And then the news article went on to say that when you're choosing pre probiotics, we need to be very careful because this is some of the experiments that went on in Malaysia. And they have found out that some of the pig and the farmers, they have extracted probiotics that can be harmful and toxic for humans. So what it is, is actually this one. In English, it's called Enterococcus, that's Konglish pronunciation. Um, the, the two kinds, for example, is Enterococcus pashum and Enterococcus pecalis. So these kinds of probiotics can be toxic for our body. That is what the article went on to say. But actually, this is a very good probiotics for our, our health. These kind of probiotics are very... Um, strong survivors they withstand harsh environment even in acid environment even in hot environment they survive and they help other probiotics to survive together with them that is why some companies put this enterococcus uh, probiotics inside their probiotics such as this product you can check this one out but what can happen between probiotics is that germs have a character to alter their DNA kind of easily, if, uh, depending on their environment. And their altered DNAs, they also tend to pass it on to the other germs around them, even though they're not the same type of germs. So they exchange DNA. Uh, so they become a different kind of a germ. And this... Uh, why is this bad is because this enterococcus ger uh, germ, the pro probiotics, um, adjust to its environment well, so they can uh, have resistance to antibiotics when you are taking in the pills for some period of time and you are taking in 
this kind of probiotics, anthrococcus probiotics, is inside the product that you are taking, then your probiotics will make resistance, will have resistance to antibiotics, and will pass this kind of uh, DNA to the harmful germs around anthrococcus probiotics. So you will become immune to antiprobiotics. So I, not anti antibiotics. So that is why they say it's bad. That's why Korean law last year uh, have made KFDA regulations, new regulations came out is to use certain strain of enterococcus, uh, must prove it, do not have resistance or anti for antibiotics or have toxic genes. So that's why it came out. So it's also good for you to check. This is like additional information. Huh? Check if you have a product, product probiotics that you're using in your house or you're intaking in your house, you can check whether you have this probiotics so that has one sense inside your product. And also please check whether your government has this regulation so that your probiotics that you are intaking right now can be toxic to you or not toxic to you. So this is like additional information. And this is um, information that I wanted to share. This is just uh, some of the comparison between the products, uh, probiotics that is being sold in Korea. But this is in Korean, but I'm just gonna share briefly. Okay. Spotlight, okay. Um, you can check out, this is the companies that have made the product and this is the product name. And Adami's one is, where are you? Yeah, here, here. So Adami's one is, uh, as I mentioned, it's from UAA, UAS, Lactobacillus, and has low cell. And is 52,000 won, 120 packets for one month, it's 13,000 won. So you can actually check out the price differences here. And you can check out Adami's one is generally okay price. And you can also check out the different kind of uh, the companies that it's from. And you can check out also the cheaper ones tend to be uh, no, they don't open up where the probiotics that they're getting from. Meaning that probably it will not be as effective. Okay, so this is the number of probiotic CFUs. And other me one is, okay, yeah, not bad. Uh, 10 billion, 3 billion, 3 billion, 2 billion, 10 billion, 2 billion, 10 billion. So I would actually generally say that Atomy probiotics is very okay price and at the same time, effective at the same time. So I would say economically, good choice. <laughs> effective and worth it. And then I also like to went on to share a comparison with another product. Uh, but this one, I'm gonna try not to show the brand, hopefully. But I think it's gonna show anyhow. <laughs> okay, I'm loading the website. I will show you a very good probiotics. It's a, it's one of the good probiotics. Um, okay. So, okay, I'm gonna turn off YouTube Live because this is gonna show the brand, what kind of brand it is. 